Okay, Shalom, first and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of his only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who definitely rule well, who have taught us this truth, and honors and citations to the elect document doing these works in sincerity and in truth. So in this lesson, man, I want to entitle this, when will Christians look up the word curse? You know, when will they research the definition of the word curse? Because you got this guy, Gino Jennings, who he, he speaks about us with great disdain, you know, and, and, and great disgust. Like if we're like if we're scum and he says, oh, uh, you know, how's God dealing with them when they out there cussing? You know, as if there's no way the Lord could be dealing with us. There's no way the Lord, there's no way we could be taken serious because we out here cussing. You know, and then you got people. That's right. That's right. Preach it, brother. You know. But <clears throat> when is the last time that you digged into the etymology of the word curse? When will you do it? Okay. And you know what? The fact that you won't, the fact that you won't dig into the word curse makes you willingly ignorant. Okay. And the scriptures, let me, let me start off with that. And then, you know, I'm going to get into the Zanzivan Bible Dictionary. Okay. So this is Second uh, Peter. Oh, uh, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 5. It says, or 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of the Most High, the power of heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. You know, but that's the point, man. You don't want to be willingly ignorant of anything in this truth. Because the scriptures say, eat the whole roll. So if it's a certain part that you don't want to eat, then that they're being willingly ignorant. So if you don't take the time to look up the definition of the word curse, then you're being willingly ignorant, man. Okay? So I'm right here in my I got my Zanzivan compact Bible dictionary. You know, you're getting all those tithes, that tithe money, you're getting all that 501c3 money, that tax exempt money. Maybe you could pick you up one, man. Maybe you could buy yourself one, you know. So, once again, the Zanzivan Compact Bible Dictionary, man. Not America's Dictionary. Not the Webster's Dictionary. Not the Modern Day Dictionary. But the Bible Dictionary, okay. And I'm here under the word curse. It says, the reverse of to bless. All right. So immediately, why didn't it say foul speech? Why didn't it say bad language? You know, why didn't it say no, no words, man? You know, I'm being a little, uh, uh, a little facetious, man, a little silly with it because, you know, it's silly, man, to, to, to really think that there's a no, no word, man, that you can't say. But why didn't it say that? First thing first as the definition. Let's see if it says it at all. Of bad words. It says the reverse of to bless. On the human level to which harm or catastrophe. So this is the definition of the word curse. To wish harm on somebody or catastrophe. If I say, man, I wish that I wish that effer, that mother effer gets into a, a car accident, man. You're putting a curse on him. That's the definition of cursing. But it goes on. It says, on the divine to impose judgment. The cursing of one's parents is sternly prohibited by Mosaic regulations. So if your parents are pissing you off, say your dad's pissing you off. Like, you know, you know how sometimes kids be in the room. You're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, maybe all pissed off, throwing themselves on the bed. 
because their dad just gave him a whipping or something. In your mind, you can't say, oh, I'm with you. You're going off if you do that. I hope you freaking die and all this and that. You know, and, and, and you wishing, yeah, you wishing harm to come upon your dad or your mom. Yo, the Lord, that's, that's prohibited, man. You can't do that. Right? So it says, Christ or the Messiah commanded those who would be his disciples to bless and curse not. Right? According to Luke 6 and 28. So, but now, don't get it, don't get it misconstrued. Don't get it twisted. Key word, it says the Messiah commanded those who would be his disciples. So he commanded his disciples to bless and curse not. Why? Amongst each other. This is Luke 6 and 28. See, this is when sometimes how you get into these scriptures, you do it line upon line here, a little there, a little. Sometimes you got to read into it, you know, like Apostle Tahar says, sometimes you do do a little Hebrew hot scotch, man. But sometimes you do have to read into it. And this is one of the cases where you got to read into it. So you really can't start at 28 when you, when you making that point. You got to start at verse 20. It says, and he lifted up his eyes. Talking about, yeah, I was shy. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. And said, bless be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of the most high. And all these verses of what he's saying is to who? Verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. So everything he's saying He's applying it to his disciples. So when he said verse 27. Or uh, verse. Yeah verse 27. But I say unto you which hear. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Yeah because. Remember at this time. He had a whole heap of, of, of disciples. He had a whole heap. Of uh, uh, people following him. But then remember some of them went away. And he even had. He had about 70. When he had 70 disciples and he sent them out two by two. Let me see that real quick. Let me search that real quick. He has 70 dis disciples at one point. Yeah, see, Luke 10. After these things, Lord, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two. See that? So he had a huge crowd. So among these 70 and whoever else may have been there at the time, you could have had Two brothers that had a dispute with each other. A land dispute, you know, a property dispute, a family dispute. So when he's looking over, look, he he looking up at Yahweh Shai. And a couple rolls over, he's looking up at Yahweh Shai, but they both had had had, had, a, had a dispute going, a major beef going. But they both looking up at Yahweh Shai and they both believe. So ultimately Yahweh Shai is saying. Y'all gotta squash that beef as it goes. This still happens today. It still happens today, man. You know, brother's personality clash. But the Lord's ultimately saying, hey, y'all, you know, y'all gotta squash that. You know, you could add a, a, a camel or something. Oh, uh, not a you could add a sheep or something going on somebody else's property and died. You know, he's like, yo, you gotta pay for that. Nah, nah, that's that's on you, man. And now they got they got issues with each other. But they both believe in Yahweh Shah, so the Lord is saying, But I say unto you, which here, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Amongst each other, amongst the disciples, man. Why? Because the Lord said, that's one of the prayers of the Yahweh Shai. He said, I pray that they may be one as we are one. Because the Lord knows you got a personality clash, man. But the Lord wants us to be one. The Lord prays for us to be one. He says, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Okay? So when he when when the Zazim Bible Dictionary says the Lord going back right where I left off it says the Messiah commanded those who would be his disciples to bless and curse not yeah so don't curse each other but bless each other all right so let's get back into the definition of the word curse I got to clear that up says when Peter because yeah and, and that's another thing oh no sorry let me keep going it says when Peter at the Messiah's child denied that he knew him, he invited a curse upon himself. All right, so here's the main point. 
the meat and potatoes of this. It says this passage is often misunderstood by Western readers. Who's Western readers? Americans. In the United States, man. It says Paul represents the curse of the law as born by the Messiah upon the cross for the believer. Here's another main point, and this is the very ending of the definition of the word curse in the Zanzivan Bible Dictionary. It says the modern Western practice of cursing, i.e. using profane language, is never referred to in the scriptures. So saying bad language and foul speech, that was never a thing in the history of our forefathers and the history of this Bible. That was unheard of. That's a new thing. That's a new is there's a term called new speak. With a, where the definition of word changes over time. So the definition of what you know as the word curse is not the same definition of the word curse according to the Bible and according to our forefathers and how they lived, man. So when you say they out there cussing, you don't really know what, you, what you're saying. And you don't really know the definition of the word curse. You don't really know what it means. Okay? And then when you say, uh, uh, oh, profanity, profanity just means outside the temple, profane. That's why the scriptures say it, 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 it uh, uh, mentioned that Esau was a profane person who, for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. Okay, meaning he he wasn't a holy person of the Lord. He was like a he was a heathen. So if you, all right, out there eating all these abominable foods and you you committing adultery, right? You stealing, you you a murderer of your brother. Of your brothers, you're a profane person, meaning outside the temple. Okay, that's what profane means. All right, it means outside of the temple, man. So just getting into the word curse as well, because you got different uh, references of the word curse in the Bible. The word curse appears in the Bible, and it appears lining up right in sync with the definition that I just read. All right, so let me get a. Uh, See, let me get a second. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start off with a Matthew, Matthew 26 and 74. This is the words of uh, the apostle uh, Peter. It says, "Yeah, I started. Then begin he to curse and to swear, saying." I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. See? So Peter Peter began to curse at them. You know? Because they were saying, yo, you, yeah, yeah, that was you. You was the one with, with Yahweh Shai. And he began to curse them. And swear. So did he get stripped of, of his apostleship? You know? No. Because he continues on his ministry in the book of Acts. And, 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 and miraculous miracles was done for the apostle Peter, man. All right. He got broken out of jail by an angel. You know, so why didn't the Lord say, oh, ooh, you curse Peter? Oh, nah. Oh, no. Okay. Come on, grow up. Smarten up. This is a uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 25. And that was the New Testament for you, might I add. Now, this is a uh, Nehemiah 13 and 25 it says, and I contended with them and cursed them. Ooh. Ooh, uh oh. So you mean to tell me a prophet, Nehemiah, who was worthy to have all of his acts recorded and written in the Bible, cursed? Why wasn't he stripped? Why wasn't he stripped of his uh, 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 uh of his lot of being a prophet for cursing? According according to the modern day language of cursing, right? Because that's not what it means, and there's nothing wrong with cursing, man. Your enemies. 
right? And I'll get it. I'll get because you know why? Even King David did it. Now, do not the scriptures say King David was a man after the Lord's heart? And he and he curses enemies. So that goes to show you that the Lord don't mind if you curse your enemies, man. Psalms 109 and 6. This is a prayer of a curse of King David unto his enemies. He says, set thou a wicked man over him. That's wishing evil on him. And let Satan stand at his right hand. That's wishing evil on somebody. I hope Satan just stay at your right hand. I hope he stay on your shoulder. You know? Verse 7. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned. And let his prayer become sin. Whoo! I hope every single time you, you pray, that's sin to the ears of the Lord. Damn. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. Let... His children be fatherless and let his wife be a widow. See? This is a prayer of King David, man. He's cursing his enemies right now, man. And let me get and let me end it off with this. To show that the Lord comes through. The Lord comes through when you put that, when you put it up. This is 2 Kings 2 and 22. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. Make in front of his bald head because he had just shaved because he was in mourning. Right. Verse 24. And he turned back and looked on him and cursed him. In the name of Yahweh Ba Shimei was shy. In the name of the Lord. He used the Lord's name as he was cursing him. So what did the, did the Lord look down and say, oh, come on, shame on you, Elisha. Watch your foul potty mouth. Watch your foul mouth, Elisha. Did the Lord open up the clouds and say that to him? No. The Lord granted his curse. Because what happened? And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear 40 and two children of them. See? So when he cursed him, he was wishing, he was, yeah, but he said, Lord, please get these little, uh, 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 these little bastards for me. Please get them, Lord. Please kill these little bastards. Please get them for me, Lord. You know, whatever he said, that was a curse that he did. And then what did the Lord do? He granted it. And then two bears came out, tore their ass up. That's the fulfillment of the definition of the word curse, man. You can't get around it. So when is these so-called Christians going to research this word? When are they going to listen? When are they going to get into it? Or are they going to continue to remain willingly ignorant, man? I think we know the answer. Lord, one is edifying. And with that, I'm going to say shalom to the elect.